Welcome back to Trek Yards, everybody. He is Commander Cockings. He's Captain Foley. Yes, we're here to talk about Stranger Worlds Season 2, Episode 8, Under the Cloak of War. Very different tone to last week. What did you think? I uh, wasn't the biggest fan of it. It's basically um, MASH in space. Starfleet MASH unit. I mean, I, I should have known after the uh, Lower Decks episode they'd go with something a little more hard-hitting. Again, it's one of those war episodes which don't really appeal to me too much. But, you know, we got a proper-looking Klingon, and we got a pretty interesting story with Mbanga. It was all right. It's kind of where I sit with it. How about you? I mean, I think it's it's pretty good. I think there's a lot of good stuff. It's all about the acting. It's another bottle show, and then bottle in a LED wall camp, which I think was the most ambitious they've ever done. You know, an LED wall camp, which I've seen some by the scenes, it took up the entire space, and then a city outside of that. So that's, you know, ambitious. I was, of course, worried going in, knowing there's was, there was going to have to be some flashbacks if we're going to see Discovery Klingons, but they did not. They've, they've retconned that out, I suppose, based on this footage. We'll talk about that later. So that's good. But I was somewhat shocked there was no ship sequences. This is meant to be a war flashback. I, I was begging for to see some, you know, I, I kind of, you know, as a fan, hoped that we'd see a new bit of prey, we'd see a new raptor, some space combat sequences to kind of, like, give us the extra oomph of, of the Trek stuff, not just being in the trenches, because, you know, ground warfare, does that make sense in the Trek universe? I mean, I've never superly enjoyed the ground combat things, because you've got spaceships that can fire 50 torpedoes from orbit. They didn't have a shield over them, they didn't have, there wasn't ships right next door, because they always said that, I don't, why are they fighting in super, 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 super primitive ways? Yeah, it's like my least favorite episode of DS9 with the ground war as well. It's such a phaser to wide beam be done with it. Yes, it, w- it would be that easy. So I just found that odd. As a, It's like fighters. Like fighters can't work in Trek unless they're suicide fighters, as in they'll get killed instantly. Now, if it was this big fleet combat and there was the, and there was the outpost where they beamed in, that'd be different. But, you know, there was just random shells firing at a city. What are those? They're not torpedoes. They're pul- pulse cannons just firing into the air. Well, there, there was no fighters flying around. There's no aircraft after this drop. Like, so there was a real, like, we don't want to commit to the visuals that should be here in the Trek universe. We're just going to tell the story of the ground thing that doesn't really fit in Trek. Like, not really hard. But LX, maybe. If you uh, push. But it's like, yeah, we're going to do this story and not really Trekkenism it too much. But Pam Buff would be an exception, of course. But, yeah. Yeah. They were they were pushing the whole war angle to get a war story out, like very reminiscent of you know Korea, like I said with Mash or Vietnam or something like that. We got Clint Howard back. I mean, he played in Orion in Discovery. Now he's like working for Starfleet. He's some guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we learned about the drug Protocol Twelve is what it's called, full of adrenaline and pain inhibitors that was designed and made by Manga. So I mean, that's kind of neat. At least we got a name for it this time. Um, I don't think I can learn anything new about it, though. No. Like, they said some words, but, like, okay. Well, just it's adrenaline and pain inhibitors, so yeah. it just makes you... Less fancy than it could have been. It's, it's simple effects, which makes sense. They've got a new sh- well, two new ships, the Calice, uh, Kelsey May, and then the shuttle, the uh, tactical shuttle thing. Drop ship, yep. Um, so that's neat. Yeah, that's what got me excited. They built a new ship. Where were the new Klingon ships? Where was the, like, they started with a vibe. But, I think the great success is the casting of the Klingon general. A lot of his scenes, I, I when he wasn't on camera, I thought he was Tony Todd. I thought his voice was very similar to the classic TNG actor Tony Todd. It was it was a little bit distracting because I kept thinking, is he actually Tony Todd and just makeup that I'm not seeing? Because I'm good at faces, but he's on Klingon makeup. But he's not, but he's a very similar voice. It's a great voice, obviously. But he put a lot of that into it. But I thought he did a, a really interesting job. I thought he, you know, loved his look, loved his vibe. You rarely see a tr- Klingon traitor that's proud of it. A defector that's pretty, pretty, pr- has ever been seen? I don't know. It's good. What do you think of him? I thought he did a fantastic job, yeah. Um, very reminiscent of other Klingons we've seen in the past, as you kind of said. Um, even General, the General from Star Trek V, kind of like those kind of vibes as well. The, the gruff old, oh, yeah. you know, older guy. Um yeah, General uh, Doc Ra, uh, Ra uh, or Ambassador Doc Ra. No, I liked his. I liked what he was wearing. It was Klingon, yet not at the same time. 
And uh, yeah, he you know puts down Klingon culture, saying there's no culture to experience. We're just warriors, essentially. Uh, that was kind of great. It didn't really tick many boxes for me. And I know, like, I know a lot of people will enjoy this one, especially the the, the vets. That's kind of their thing. They'll think this is a great one. I unfortunately just it kind of bums me out. I mean, we're supposed to do that, obviously, but uh, to find out that Mbanga is actually the butcher of Jagal, not this guy, and I don't know how I feel about that necessarily. And the guy, the fact that this guy took the credit for it, yeah, I didn't expect it to end the way it did. I mean, it was wow. You think there'd be more ramifications from that? Yeah, I had to watch the ending twice to understand the dialogue of the of the reveal. I don't think, I mean, my perspective, I didn't necessarily think it was clear because I I thought the general had killed one guard and then fled and then the guard then been killed the rest. It's not what they said, but that's what... Uh, they weren't guards. They were three warlords. That yeah, was well, pointed yes. out, so. uh, But I, I, because they explicitly told us that for 90% of the episode, then they swapped in the last sort of six minutes, which I get is the twist, but... I was like, okay, fine. So when when you when you go back and listen and really pay attention to the idea, oh, okay, then the whole episode works better because of course, and Benga's like, you lying bleep. Not only are you, I know you're a coward, but you're you know you're taking a massacre that I hate with all every part of my being, as a positive, which you yourself aren't having the guilt with. It's why you're so free and fancy because you just ran and the problem was solved for you. So the ending really elevates the piece destroys Mbenga's character because he had to massacre lots of guards to get to the top people in cold blood. I mean, you know, you know, lots of people. I mean, he, you know, and they stabbed the guy in the head and he killed the other guy in the neck. I mean, you know, he brutalized Cleons. But we saw that in episode one, so no one's surprised, right? He punched everyone and broke their ribs and, you know. But I, 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 I wish we got some sort of sense. I know it's probably a season three thing, but, you know, He's been explicitly said to be a very strong combat officer, but he explicitly says he joined Starfleet for medicals. So he didn't. He didn't join for combat and then swapped medical. So why on earth would he go? I mean, he's not a young spring chicken. So he had ten, fifteen years or ten years of non-war. Why would he go from I'm a doctor, mum, to I'm a doctor now? I'm going to kill people and beat up people, and then there'll be a war. I'll kill. Even, I'll refuse to kill people. And I'll kill even more people. Like there was a disconnect of character. It is coming later, but. You know, he's a bit of a monster, I guess, but not, but yes. It, you know, this is the context of what they're showing us, right? He's way more violent than we think. And certainly the way they present the last scene, or the last, last scene, you know, with, with the pane of glass to, to to stop seeing what the truth is, you know, he probably did kill him unnecessarily. Why wouldn't he? He had one, you know, an excuse to, so he killed him and he enjoyed it. Okay. Or did it slip? No, maybe? I don't know. So th- clever by them to, you know, but since we know he killed the other people in cold blood, it doesn't really redeem his character at all to maybe not fully murder the other guy. Yeah, I think go away with it, as you said. I was really expecting, though, the, the twist at the end, because we're near, near the end of the season, to be he's being sent off the Enterprise. I thought so, too. Yeah. Because you don't do that. The poster child for Klingon Federation peace. You don't murder him in cold blood. On your ship. On your ship. Under, under on your watch. Of peace. Yeah. Uh, that would have been a great excuse to get him off. But then, of course... Why the hell would Kirk lay on the ship five years later to work under McCoy, having been a butcher, a known butcher and masochist? Like, certainly hurt. Well, certainly hurts the guy who played him in TOS. Like, it's fine if he's a war vet, it's left uncertain, but that guy's, that guy, you watch him in TOS, he's like, that guy's a really sinister chap. They said the general killed children and families. He said to Pike, well, he killed the children either way. Why is it just because time has passed, he's now getting off from the, the punishment? So, it's a, you know, hey, Meg had a great. You know, great chat at the end, and Pike disappointed and trying to hold his head high. And I loved that contrast of the non-war veterans. Enterprise went out because Discovery had to put them somewhere, and they're so fresh, and you can feel the the hopefulness. And then you cut the other people. It's like, yeah, they're broken. That was a fun, not fun. It was, it was a strong parallel. The Pike and um, well, I was expecting more Ortigas because like that was clearly she could have been more involved than her standard a few lines. Thought she'd get in more trouble for what she did, too, where she's talking about him being the butcher of Jagal as he walks on the bridge. <sighs> Captain on the bridge. It's like, oof, that's rough. I, I have no <laughs> idea if they heard him or not. Uh, oh, they did. They clearly did. Uh, yeah. But, you know, love the Cleon in that one scene saying, oh, I love your view. 
Birds will probably never have views. You guys are better ships. Like, yes! <laughs> Klingons will never admit it, yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, and then back to Gino, we actually saw the pre-replicator. It's a replicator, but it had all the noises of TOS. So we can infer, even though we know they had galleys and cooks, but I guess you can have both. Basic stuff is is basic food replicator. Uh, everything else is cook. That was fun. I mean, they used the sound effects. I was very happy to see that. Yeah, I, I like seeing the Andorian Special Forces officer as well with the scar. That was kind of cool. I I went to Omega for help just to get the just to get the Protocol Twelve drug, and uh, Omega turned him down, and then ended up just going himself anyway because everybody got massacred, including the kid that he took care of. That was the that was the very mash like part for me. Not just the 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 grittiness of the injured people coming in and then you know, having to massage the heart and stuff like that. Oof, um, but graphic. Um, even the, even that whole thing of healing the kid enough and then the kid wanting to go out again, even, even though you know better, you know he's going to die. Yeah, that was brought back a lot of MASH vibe for me. There's a lot of storylines like well, that. Well, it was, it was all of the tropes, right? All the familiar tropes except a pattern buffer, which was obviously a Trek trope, but it was very tropey. Yeah. Well, the pattern buffer is just basically like in inducing a coma. Put him in a coma. We'll take care of him later. We'll bring him out later to help him out. So and I, I think they did a very good job with the beaming sound effect lady making that horrific note by the end. The fact that she can't say the intercom beaming quick enough, it's that quick, was th effective. And, lo and lots of Mbenga topless. So all Mbenga fans there, you had a lot of uh, you know a lot of that. It was good. It was good for a war episode of Star Trek, if that's what you're into. Like, a lot of people love the Siege of 1138, or whatever the hell it's called. But we got to go with those modern tropes to tell the same same kind of story, right? Um, they're running out of power packs and things like that. Like, really quickly, it's like, okay, well, it's only that only happens when it's convenient for the story, so cool. I don't know. They're just they're just not my, it's not my kind of episode, honestly. Um I know a lot of people will really like it or not necessarily like it, but enjoy it because, you know, a lot of, like I said, vets have lived through things like this and they can relate to it. And that's what it's good for, this kind of story. Well, it, um, I mean, most people aren't vets, but it gives you this this grounded, literally and figuratively, perspective that we they Trek almost never goes into. So I think people that want that perspective, it's like a comedy or a musical, like it's just different, a different thread on the same, you know. And the acting was great, although, you know, upset being the, the, the emotion of the game. Although, hey, a good fan Benga, I mean, he kept his cool every step. I mean, you know, all pride, all, all you know, credit to the man. They just murder the guy, you know. So, amazing. And then, even, even the, you know, the hand-to-hand -hand fight thing, which was oddly choreographed by, I guess it's based on real martial arts, like grappling, which is a weird martial art. It's not, you know, showy. It's just a thing. So, he, he kept his cool so well there, considering. And he didn't take advantage just to beat him up, which was the obvious, like, the setup. Like, ah, oh, look, I get to punch him a few times. Aha. No, he didn't. Held, held his hand to write the last second. Hashtag, like, confirmed they've, you know, retconned their own crap with Discovery with the whole Klingons shave their heads during war. Yeah, no, they don't. But that was just dumb. So, anyway, Yay! that's fixed. Cool. And, yeah, I love how they just ignored the fact that there was, like, no other, you know, Discovery Klingons. Just just do it properly. The new the new Klingon daggers, the well, they're they're designed to be the, like the, the the old ones, but they're kind of like a new take to them. They looked really cool, I gotta say. Well, my assumption is they were specialist, higher ranking ones, given that they were fighting a, a higher rank people. He grabbed one, or, or it would make sense that the Endoran would keep one from, as a trophy from another guy he killed. And Benga had that one, and then we saw it on the 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 um, belt of one of the captains. I would assume it'd be a high ranking, a bit more decorative, versus literally the ba very basic iron of the original, the classic. Yeah, it was nice. It's good. No, yeah, I mean, they were for, warlords after all, so yeah, yeah, it would make sense. I mean, for a Klingon story, I wish there was more Klingons. You know, I, 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 good story, but I really would have liked to have seen, even even some flashback or well, well, I guess flashbacks. Yeah, cuts to what the Klingons were doing. I know we're not meant to sympathize with them, even an iota, right? They're entirely villainous. But it would been really interesting to have cut inside the castle. And see the Klingon generals, see the army, see them as classic guns, classic armor. You know, give us a sense of what they're doing. You know, make it a bit more three dimensional. Because I'm not used to seeing Klingons being projected as such one dimensional villains. At least the the, the past ones, right? There was no depth to that. 
at all. The main guy, yes, but I wasn't expecting so much one dimensionality for them. Yeah. I guess the only other thing to touch on is the Spock and Chapel thing. Like in the last time on, which I'm really getting sick of, uh, we heard the Ortega say Spock just learned to leave people alone. Um, and him not liking to see Chapel feeling the way she was, and then basically guilt tripping her at the end, saying, Oh, it's, it's clear you don't want me around. And he walks away. It's just like, Okay. He's being blunt well, and truthful. Yeah. Um, Vive Vulcan. Yeah, I, I, I feel that was interesting, um, adding to their their kind of arc, so... <clears throat> well, it yeah. was... It, he was very Vulcan again. Last week affected... Sorry, not last week, two days ago affected him. Clearly, he'd been brought back. He took that to heart, and he lost almost all of the humanisms, I thought. He was shockingly Vulcan again, and their chemistry was back to sort of season one chemistry with that are they even together vibe? Because he cares for her, but you could be... He was doing that in season one a little bit, so it kind of added, a, once again, a well, they won't lay to it. As if they had their roller coaster, and now they come down the other side, and they're just kind of settling into this simpleness. The other thing that kind of, it didn't bother me, it was just a small thing, but the, the Botswain whistle, yeah, because it's become kind of a tradition here on Enterprise. Oh, so just Enterprise then, eh? It's not fleet-wide. It's not something you do when, you know, you have special dignitaries come aboard. I mean, later, it's we see it in Picard. Um, it just, it's, it seemed like it was something enter Enterprise-specific that they just kind of, you know, do more than normal. Uh, like rolling out the red carpet. I love that. That was kind of nice. Um, I did like the Klingon at the beginning. Um, I didn't really have any issues with the character, honestly, if he was trying to redeem himself. I think he was. Um, I, do, I do too. Um, That's what makes it sad. So, yeah. Because he was genuinely a reformer. He saw yeah. them, he saw his generals taking it to so far past the red line of, of honor, which actually, that's interesting. They never once mentioned honor because it's not honorable to kill civilians. And that could have been a good way of him going into that, saying, you know, this is not honourable. I had to stand up for the belief of Kaelas. So I can't this! You know, and, and but they, they didn't even use that. Because, you know, you know, people go too far. Like suicide bombing, Starbase, whatever. That was the thing they did. No, he was good. I, I'm sad for him, you know. Because especially as... You know, it's been, been a little while he's been helping. It's been a couple of years now. Because they have that wonderful... Don't tell how many years this was ago. Many years ago. Like, ah, this is the war. Ah, ah. It's one of those weird anomaly episodes for me because it's a good episode. It's well written. It's well acted. It's well done. It tells an interesting story. But it just, my personal enjoyment factor for it was just through the floor. I just didn't care. Up to the halfway point, I was, it was all right. It was all right. I'm looking forward to, like you said, a, a space battle or something. Uh, something more serious to happen. And then it just kind of devolved into, yeah, character assassin assassination for Mbenga, unfortunately. I mean, not really. You got to have dynamic, interesting characters that are have internal struggles and all that. That's cool. But it just it didn't really do anything for me. So it's it's a weird one, it, it'll, it, especially with, when it comes to scoring when we do our live, because my personal enjoyment is not great, but I have to score it based on its writing and the story it told. And that was all pretty good. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people would really enjoy this one. I'm just kind of stuck in the middle on that well, it, one. So it, I mean, it's similar to some people just hate time trial episodes. And it's like, often they're some of the best, in our opinion, of all of Star Trek. And I suppose just dislike them in whole cloth. I'm like, oh, that's... What can you do, right? So, you know, you can't, shouldn't have to justify your own opinion there. But the acting was very good. Everyone did a good job. Uh, and like the juxtaposition of, of, of Pike... Scout boy Pike and everyone else was fun. It was good. I mean, it, was, it was good all around. Yeah, just it needed a space battle. It needed that elevation into the into the upper echelon sci-fi to kind of elevate the story. Um, show some D sevens bombing as as it is. Show them bombing a city. You know, show it through the the sci-fi Star Trek lens. You know, you always say it can be a great episode, but is it Star Trek? You know, could this be a Battle Galactic episode? Yes. Could it be a not a slider? It'd be kind of difficult, but <laughs> Babylon Five, yes, Stargate, yeah, 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 yeah. It can definitely be a Stargate episode. Um, what makes yeah, it intrinsically could... Star Trek? Nothing, nothing at all. Just the characters. Who were the new characters? In terms of like they're the ones we're adding to, and Benger and Chapel, both extras in essence. You know, 
third tier characters in TOS. They're just people who were there. Yeah, I expected more hot headedness from Ortegas for sure. Yeah, I really that was yeah. I'm she's, missing. she's younger and more prone to anger, I would think. Also, War Hero more, said uh, yeah. uh, Boimler. Yeah, but you know, I think she would be more off kilter than the more you know kind of studied and you know experienced Mbanga, You know, but because he, he was the butcher, so he did a whole different level yeah, of trauma. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of subtlety with his hand clenching and stuff during the dinner. It's like that was. It was well done. So I think how Pike's like, I think maybe you should go help and see. <laughs> yes, Captain. <laughs> yeah, great. And then, oh, and the Cleo just grabs his arm. He's like, oh, 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 no. That's good. Full combat or full contact combat later. <laughs> I'll check my schedule. Comment down below what you guys thought about it. Um, let us know your feelings, your thoughts, your opinions. We want to hear them. That's what the comment section is for. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the notification bell icon to all so you don't miss any content from us. We got some ship videos coming out of this one. Uh, you know, so but look forward to that. And uh, yeah, join us for lives. And while you're here on the channel, support us. My Patreon is monthly. Join the channel. Also monthly. You can one time donations, super chat via any live you see us. If we're, if we're live, hey, say jump in, say hey. But five bucks and say double hey. Or super thanks on a video. PayPal, trackyards.hotmail.com, or a shirt with our faces on down below. All the things. So until next time, guys, he is Commander Kirkings. He's kind of funny. Bye, everybody. <laughs>